bite your knee. Could you make my <laughs> rhinoceros large for me? Yes. Sorry. Where am I going? <laughs> They're dragging to the away. <laughs> <laughs> A, uh, and the the gate lifts and uh, head guard goes in. This is a nice uh, place. Oh, yeah. They must be doing uh, well over here. It's this way. It's this. At this point, you get a way better view of the whole area. Uh, it's it's beautiful property right on the coast. Gorgeous villa. Uh, you can see people drinking wine and reveling reveling on the inside uh, you get a glimpse of this head guard as he runs down over to a man and looks like there's a woman with him and he, he's like <laughs> you see are they letting us in the gate or no not yet not yet okay. I love then that he looks we'll, like white uh, we'll talk to this guard here real quick okay. while we're waiting have you all had any trouble with uh Recently. Oh, every now and again we got to go put them in their place, but uh, mm. you know, not More, not uh, recently. So they haven't been any worse uh, recently. No, we occasionally have problems, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary. We have to. Well, that's good. You know, we have to beat them back occasionally. Those gross well, I, beings. I must admit, being uh, someone. I keep hearing the word fey. You have a description of them. Fey is a pretty broad term. Oh, it's actually a slur. We well, found that out. Yeah, I guess I should suppose I should say it's a, you know, I guess it's a catch-all. Uh, but basically, it's the forest folk that live out there. Uh, awful creatures, really. Definitely not human. Uh, sometimes creatures they're creatures, or well, so... sometimes they're horrific beasts, mm. and sometimes there's two-headed dogs, packs of them. Uh, you know, that vicious, vicious goblins. Do any of them have pointed ears like I do? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. He was trying to be polite, not saying anything to you. I have. Yeah, he, he kind of, like, looks away a little bit. Can I make a... Is there a check I can make to figure out what sort of animal might be the two-headed dog? Like, what sort of beast? Yeah, go ahead. Like, like a nature, or uh, what do you think? Make Yeah, make a nature check. All right. I'm gonna... On your, on your check, check. Oh, you know about these things. These are death dogs. Uh, classic monstrosity in uh, pretty wild parts of the wood. Sounds like death dog. Oh, is that what you call him? We, we just, uh, you know, we have we have a policy. Put him down whenever we see him. Uh, uh, w with the 28, do I know if death dogs are, like, naturally pretty aggressive? Yeah, they're naturally pretty aggressive. And you would also uh, know that their bite uh, has the potential to poison you. Okay. Uh, well, it's a good policy to have. The beasts can be rather aggressive. And a poison bite is no better. This guy yells, "Tension!" And then all the guy, all the guards, line up and salute as this guy walks past. And he goes, <clears throat> "You know, I sort of can't believe it, but uh, I guess he's just in a good mood today." Uh, Voight will see you. Hell yeah. Follow, follow me. And, uh, you know, he walks He walks you guys through the gate uh, on the path. Through the party. Through the, through the party. It's not a huge party. It's just some friends are over uh, enjoying the wine. And, uh, you know, he sort of, he brings you over here. You see a hand of a, a small handful of guests. It's really just Voight and his pals lounging around on the on the, uh, the patio, essentially. And you get a really good view here. Mountain looks great. River looks great. It's very idyllic. 
and uh, he comes over here, uh, head guard, makes a little noise, and he says, uh, Voight, uh, these, these people are here to see you. And he's like, Voight stands up. The girl's just sitting next to him. And he goes, Oh, hello! Uh, and, you know, as he essentially greets, he goes, My name is Franz Voigt. And this guy sort of goes back to his his duties as, as, a, as guard at the gate. And he goes, Voigt looks up and he says, Hon, go get these people some wine. And she runs off. Oh, is that your daughter? No, of course not. She's my maid. Oh, okay. Just checking. Yeah. Of course, anyways. Me too. Right he, uh, he <laughs> avoided, like, froze his brow a little bit. He's like, <laughs> You get the idea? He didn't like that comment. Ugh, children. So, uh, <laughs> She's my maid, please. And, uh, you know, let, let's see. What does old Voight look like? I'm sure you guys. We can kind of see. He's got stash. Yeah. Posted it in Dreamscape Recaps. He has a very nice oh. mustache, well put together man, wearing a suit, nice curly hair. And, uh, you know, he means business. Uh, whenever uh, whenever businesses is here, he's he's uh, extremely focused on that. He's he's a bit drunk right now, but not overly drunk. Pleasure to meet you, Councilman. Oh, nice to meet you too. Uh, uh, and he's sort of he's sort of asking your name, uh, Vendrick of Cohen. Vendrick, and uh, your compatriots. Oh well, we're just here having a time on our at my property. It's beautiful, isn't it? And he quite nice. Fishing right. for some compliments. Yes. Lovely view. Oh, thank you. I I believe, I mean, that's why I built it here. What can I do for you? Do you do tastings? Oh, yes, that'll be here momentarily. Awesome. And the, the girl runs up, and uh, she runs to each one of you and gives you a, a glass. And she comes back over here and sits next to Franz. Venric ah. will, will politely deny. He'll just sort of put his hand up and shake his head. Really? Oh, Horace will take yours. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll let Horace, he'll like put his hand out like Horace can have it. Okay. <sighs> I will hold it, but not drink it. But like, I will like partake in like background activity. I appreciate the gesture, but uh, I'm an old man. I don't goes, need to be drinking as much anymore. He goes, I promise it's not a problem. We have plenty. We have plenty. It's a local specialty. It's my, my family recipe. I understand. But yeah, dude. I had I some at the bar. Drinking in my younger days. It's really good at the bar. I bet it's going to be even better straight from the source. Ah, good man. Good man, just let me know if you need any more. And he uh, he goes, he sits down, crosses his legs, and he goes, Well, I was told you're here on business. Does he seem to be inviting us to also sit down? Like, should we come in this little... Yeah, come on in and uh, powwow. All right. I will drink some of this wine. Yeah. It's very good. It has a unique taste that you haven't uh, ever tasted before, but it's it's excellent. Now, Hendrick Horace will, will stand. Horace actually has a very refined palate. The one thing he did learn in paladin school is an appreciation for various alcohols. So okay. he will he will give a description of the wine that like. Well, I guess I should roll. What should I roll to see if I give like a, a good like sommelier? Like, oh, heavily oxidized. I, I would say that being a, a Yaznik Paladin and a Sommelier, whatever you roll, roll it at advantage. Mm. What would this be? Uh, nature? I would say. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do investigation. Ooh, okay. I'm not very intelligent. Or perceiving. You can perceive how good <laughs> yes, the wine you can, is. Yes, yeah, you can do perception as well. All right. Well, let me go with a. Well, I'll You're do both, and we'll see which one's. Actually, the investigation is better. 
But they're both <laughs> about the same. Yeah, I go ahead and give your uh, go ahead and give your uh, your your explanation. Hmm. It has some rich, earthy overtones and a faint hint of. Do I detect uh, raspberry? Ooh, you're very close. Hmm. I give it another. I swirl it and I give it another sniff. And say you in nature. Nature. Hmm. Go try it. Try again. Hmm. Cherry. Oh. Uh. And he goes. Actually. It's Arlen. And he. Oh. Holds up a couple of uh, a couple of uh, a couple of berries. It's a it's a plant with small red berries. It grows mostly in the undergrowth of forests, uh, and it, it actually has uh, some healing properties. Data, what are you trying to understand about this? Well, man, I was trying to understand what the fuck it is, but with the seven. Dwarvendil <laughs> deals with herbs, though. I'll make He's that like, argument that's on Dwarvendil's very... behalf. <laughs> herbs and fungi. Oh, yes. Some might even say it's the secret ingredient. Well, Not really, fun. of course. It's just the process, but uh, that's the real secret ingredient. But, but yes, I'm very proud of my winery here. It's actually the, the majority of what I, what, what I export. And that's, well, that's what pays for all of this. And he gestures to his whole his whole uh, estate. Yes, it is a very Rather. nice yard. Yes. Well, I sure am dying to know. What are you guys here for? You're, uh, we were sent here. Well, not here specifically, but nearby in the woods to deal with some fae uh, mm. by one of the other council members, uh, Billy Hawkman. Ooh, but his face immediately goes sour. He's going to look around, you know. We uh, just met him. We're not like his friends or anything. He asked us to deal with the fae, and we were a bit curious. If there's such a problem for his little area, then surely it would be a problem here as well. But it doesn't seem to be the case. <clears throat> He furrows his brow, and he's like, uh, I care not for those foul creatures. Yeah, but, you know, my my guardsmen deal with them pretty easily. Uh, but, you know, only from, from time to time when they get a little uppity. Uppity, uh, you say? Yeah. You know, when they try to expand their territory or come onto my grounds, we, we have to quickly give them the boot. But Billy sent you here, huh? What does Billy exactly want you to do? He wants us to deal with the Fae over by his chunk of land. He seems to be under the impression that you somehow riled them up. Ha! <laughs> well, I don't need any riling to get those guys to attack. I mean, they, they you know... They're violent creatures out there in the forest. I certainly haven't done anything that would be unlawful. Hmm. And you can roll um, a uh, insight on that. I, I right. honestly, I would. I, I want to because uh, saying <laughs> that you haven't done anything unlawful means you've done something unlawful. <laughs> okay. Well, with the with the twenty and eighteen, you would know that maybe there's something unlawful that he's done. Yeah. Oh, we would never assume such a thing, Councilman. Mm. We were more worried about your own uh, personal well-being, to be honest. Oh, well. Well, I'm fine, thank you. You know, it, come think of it, it, you know, it might actually help me if you uh, get rid of some of those, Faye. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I don't I mean don't, to I... alarm you, but the 
concern is founded. I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, some of uh, Billy's men were killed. Yes, I did hear about check. that. I'll make a quick insight check on that. I want to see his reaction to me. You want to see his that. face? Billy's men. Yeah. Were, Billy's men were killed. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Billy's mustache twitches. And, uh, but you see it like it's in slow motion, Fedrick. Uh, he has a extremely quick smirk across his face. He goes, oh, they were killed? And, uh, you know that he knows okay. that they were killed. Uh, he goes, oh, they, they were killed? Uh, what, what were they doing out there? Well, they were surveying uh, some of his land, getting ready to clear it out before uh, they were attacked. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Well, you know, it, it is dangerous being out there, you know, so far away from the, the city and the, the walls. Oh, yes. Very dangerous. It's another reason why we came here. We were concerned. We wanted to know if uh, you had had any altercations with some of these Fey recently. You are beyond the walls, after all. Well, truth be told, uh, occasionally those Fey come on out and uh, attack my men. But at this point, all the men that I have are are veterans. You know, they can they can hold their own. And. Uh, you know, occasionally when we're out there in the forest, I say we, I really mean my my uh, servants. You know, if we're ever collecting Arlen for the wine, uh, sometimes we get attacked. But it's not never anything we can't handle, of course. You understand? So you, you wouldn't say that any of the Fae have been more aggressive at well, there is one creature out there that's pretty aggressive, but we don't we don't run across it too often. What is it? Have you ever heard of a chimera? I have. Rather oh yeah, you would know all about it. Of few types, I, I'm a bit of a monster hunter myself. Oh! But chimeras can be, well, based on the name, they can be quite a lot of things. Yeah, well, this particular beastie is uh, quite dangerous. And, you know, I, it's hard for me to call it a fey creature, but it is a violent beast that has attacked in the past and well, if you say you're a monster hunter, I maybe I can give you a job to do while you're out there uh, working for for Billy. And he spits. It's like it would it would it would help me sleep at night if this uh, chimera was put down and. Uh, if you, you know, maybe I'm getting too too far ahead of myself. Wait, does that sound something like something you all can do? Oh, yeah. We put down Camaros all the time. That sounds like something we would be uh, very excellent at. But, but wait. We don't work for free. You, you yeah. want us to, to do the Hawkman job? I thought. Yeah, oh, you guys... Uh, I don't want you to... No. No. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Look. The Fae have to get... Put in their place. Put in their place every now and again, of course. You know, I don't say... I don't want you to get rid of all of them. But, knocking a few back, let's just say it wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't be totally against it. If you know what I mean. Even though it is a job Billy's asking you to do. You are aware as to why he's asking us to do this. And he looks very serious and he goes, yes, 
And that's why I'm saying don't kill all of them. So you're okay with losing part of this beautiful view? No, I'm not okay with that at all. Let's just say uh, there are some things money can buy. Uh, and uh, we're not interested in just money. But we are we interested in money. We need a ticket. Oh, yes. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vedra just cuts Horaz off. <laughs> you say, we need a, you need a ticket. And uh, he, like, looks over, he looks, like, right at you guys. He's like, a ticket. You're not asking for what I think you're asking for. I think we're asking yeah, for dude. what you think we think you're asking for. Yeah, I think we are the better we are. It's out of the question. I'm not paying a ticket. I'm not paying, giving you guys a ticket to go into the forest and kill some fae. It's out of the Billy question. Billy is. Billy is. Billy is giving you a ticket. Yeah. That's why we got to kill all of them. Gosh, what a <laughs> moron. Nothing is worth that much. Because he's literally giving up his yearly advantage doing that. Oh, oh. I promise you, Billy's not going to go in. Billy's not going to uphold his end of the deal. I promise you that. But then we'll, we'll scalp him, too. Oh, my Vendrick, word. Vendrick's going to slip in there with, with something where it's like, well, perhaps Billy has larger plans than you think. A ticket for that. Mm. For the land. It is rather close to your vineyard. It would be a convenient spot. But I'm just speaking in hypothetical. Hmm. Yeah, he's he's pretty unhappy. Uh, he takes a big old swig of wine. He is thinking about this. He goes, hmm. We can deal with the chimera as well. Rope it in. I need to consider this. And he says, he says, look, as far as getting a ticket, that's out of the question for now. However, I will pay you handsomely if you bring me the Camaro horn. Yes, it has a, it has three heads. And in particular, I need the goat head's horn. Oh. Why do you need a goat's head horn? I think that's a... I think that's an ingredient to orc vitality potion, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it is part of a few rituals, yes. Dorfazel just looks over and he goes, "It's so he can please his maid." <laughs> How is about it... we hold off on the Fey job for now while you think this over? We'll deal with the Chimera for now. All right. Yes, I suppose we can do that. So, so Thanks. just out of game, what what Vendrick is doing is basically trying to put a bug in his ear and on his brain that, hey, Billy wants us to clear this chunk of land near you. Mm -hmm. And he seems oh, yeah. like you get what you're putting down. OK, OK, he's, he's picking make... up. He's picking up what we're putting he's down. Picking, yeah. 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 He didn't get it. He didn't and, get as far as he as he has in life by being a dummy. Yeah, and part of this strategy, though, is like, is this delaying, right? Because it makes him think about it more, which may, you know, let his mind run a bit wild on it. And in the meantime, we get to do some monster hunting. Indeed. So as I opposed to that. flat um, manifest destiny. I do have one more question. Go ahead. As a fellow farmer... I would hate it if any of my plants or any of my stock were to get trampled upon by a... It sure would be a shame to see your by a, uh, a rhino. By a rhinoceros. <laughs> I, 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 would hate, I would hate to see my, my livelihood get trampled by some bestial fight, let alone a rhinoceros. Where do, does your... Arlen grow, so this way we may avoid trampling it. Indeed. 
Interesting. He'll, he'll definitely tell us that. I think she wants to ask, where would we maybe find this chimera? I assume it's not in your vineyard. No, it's certainly not in the vineyard. Well, it's... The chimera is in the forest. That's what you're asking. But And the Arlen. And he looks back to Aya. And he says, you're asking where to find this? And he holds no. up the, the Arlen. I'm asking where to avoid, so this way we do not go where it is. We can be as vague as possible if it's the southern half of the of your patch of forest. I merely just want to avoid destruction, unnecessary destruction. Hmm. Well, I'm afraid... I'm afraid it's something that might not be able to be avoided. Because it's in the forest with the Fae. All right. That's where it is. Well, well maybe we know why uh, why old Billy wants the Fae cleared out of that forest so bad. I say this uh, to Vendrick, but loud enough so that uh, old boy can hear me here. Yeah. Uh, we'll deal with one. He looks other. a little embarrassed. He hears you. He looks a little embarrassed. <laughs> Especially since, uh, you know, he doesn't exactly own that forest. Oh. Yeah. That seems like quite the pickle. Well, we'll go investigate the other things that we were told. Yeah. We'll go kill that thing and bring you the goat horn, go horny goat yeah. weed that you we need. Can, we can find this beast. For your bone. the rest. Just uh, bring me the bring me the horn. Thank you, counselor. Thank you for your time. Yes, and he stands up and straightens his uh, you know, his suit and his vest and stuff, and he's like, well, well, uh, good luck out there. Just, uh, Boy, let's go. Oh wait, Here's one more place. thing, dude. <laughs> yes. We we get a couple more bottles of that wine for the road, dude. Oh yeah, road wines. Uh, Need some supplies. We're gonna fight a Camara, dude. Yeah. Sure, sure, I guess. And uh, he looks at the girl. She runs down into the uh, into this this room. I think that's where all the wine is at, and then, Jake, uh, just so that we know for the future. Yeah. He's going to do a heist. Uh, two bottles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She hands, she Perfect. She one to each of the Yasniks. Thanks, bro. Oh, yeah, she knows. Enjoy. As we yeah. leave, Tootsie's going to burst out of the bushes, crawl down through here, Lick his boots for half a second and then run after Dragul. Good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> good heavens. Thank you good for heavens. your time, Councilman. Have fun yes. at your party. And oh, you, thank you. And he gives a, 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 a very gentlemanly nod to the maid before he leaves. Can you, can you get, can we just take half a second to think about a world in which some crazy rich businessman hires a bunch of armed homeless people to go hunt a wild beast for parts of its you, body. You make it sound hey, like we couldn't do that right we're not, now. We're I not... Round up. <laughs> wait, wait, are we, wait, 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 are wait. we technically homeless if we're just drifters? I'm not I mean, homeless. by all accounts, this is the... No, no, you gotta remember, this is from a D&D &D setting, and you're looking at it through Gary Gygax's lens. It's the equivalent of hiring some AC unit like workers, you know, HVAC workers to then yeah. go kill a monster, right? Yeah, We're yeah. blue collar. This is our job. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you come highly recommended. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got a monster? You want to powder its horn for your bedroom? Just hire some fucking wackos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hire the wackos, eh? I'm gonna nod accordingly, and then I'm just gonna like 
gently set my still full glass just off to the side to say thank you for the wine and I will snatch Ian's glass and take it with me I, are you going to walk back in and take it no he's yeah, on his right. 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 Yeah. yeah I, I lean over from the rhino do you give any to the rhino I'll give a little to the rhino Mr. Vendrick he doesn't seem to like it yes <laughs> I got us here through the gate, and then honestly had no idea where to go from there. You have bought us time in the quest that is easier to fulfill than straight up a genocide. Yeah. Don't put yourself down. Yeah, yeah we can still do a genocide. There. Yeah, we just doing like a chimera genocide, dude. We're killing all the chimeras in that forest. Boom, chimera genocide. Ir irregardless of what's going on, dealing with this chimera at least is a very obvious path. In we'll deal with the other stuff while we're out in the woods. Maybe we can find out some more about this fey business. Some of those creatures are wild and dangerous, so their concern is valid. We just need to find out if there's any other Fey that may have gotten mixed up in the crossfire of it all. I I would agree. I I don't. If it's a creature harming others, I understand. But if it's someone innocent, please, can we have some civility? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, but if they're murderers, I don't know if that counts as innocent, though, dude. Dwarfadil is our resident. Uh civil uh, resident decider of that i imagine you seem to have a good eye for people people and ool and he's gonna turn around he's gonna put his his hand on ool's shoulder things get hairy with the chimera you know what to do <laughs> don't touch me if you want to keep your hand please ah yeah he lets go Think I have no way to take your hand or anything. It just felt badass saying it. Uh, it was very threatening. Mm, mm. So what happened? I was uh, catnapping. <laughs> oh, yeah, Wool sleeps with his eyes open like an owl. So <laughs> 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 oh, we're hunting a monster. A chimera. <laughs> yeah. A fearsome beast. We're going to... Take its horn and turn it into orc vitality potion. See, this is much better than killing a bunch of fae. See, I knew you guys could come up with something good. <laughs> We're still going to kill those fae, though. Well, I definitely know that the paw of a chimera is um, useful for a couple of rituals. But First, we orc vitality? No, not orc vitality. <laughs> the orc vitality. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to tell him that one. So, what I, exactly uh, is that type of potion? Do you? Uh, oh, I, uh, do you have uh, a means of tracking the beast? Or are we going to have to do it the old-fashioned way? Um. I could track let, the beast. Let me. Well, then Dragul let me shall lead the way. I can console if you give me a mere moment or three. Are we out of the vineyard yet? Yeah, I would say you're walking out of the vineyard and you're you're on your you're on your way towards the forest. I things are getting I, more you know becoming more wooded, but it's not deep in the forest yet. Does anyone have any fur of a bloodhound? Fresh out, dude. Le left it in my other armor. <laughs> so weird. Hang on, wait a second. Let me check my spell component pouch as I'm gonna like dig through my spell component pouch. Is there any is there any fur on Her Horace's dog, dude? Uh, it's got a little bit of fur on his butt, but it's mostly furless. Yeah, maybe it's butt arrow work, dude. Fur of a butt hair. Butt hair from my. You want to hear it from my horn dog? <laughs> Dragul, while you're doing it, I'll 
assist you with some guidance. Uh, I use guidance. Uh, your ghoul to help him. Uh, when we get Are far enough away a spell? from the property, um, sorry, Jake's just gonna say, Hey, um, so if it's Arlen's on like Billy Hoffman's land, dude, wouldn't that mean that we could like blackmail him into uh, that's what I'm thinking, into giving us the ticket, or we tell Billy and then Billy takes literally half his business or at least profits? From my understanding based on my notes here. Uh, Billy Hawkman owns land that is adjacent to the vineyard. Yeah, yeah but he, that, he uh, said the Arlen stuff the grows in from. Billy's forest, dude, which is like the ingredient. Yeah, but in adjacent want. to refuge is not refuge. No, but if he's got the, Billy's the berries, berries, if the berries are Billy's and he's got Billy's berries unpaid for in his wine, dude, then he owes Billy some money and that could be easily like half this whole vineyard dude i you know, like i'm not a fucking lawyer dude but you know i know law i've, I've read law while drunk sometimes you know occasionally a sentence makes sense so if you'd like to know my true opinion on it no. i don't care which of these people we get the ticket from as long as we get it as long as we get it yeah, but like when he could get to the... buy our silence and our non bay genocide thing. I think we'll have a better chance with this fellow than Billy. That's what I'm saying, dude. We blackmail him said... and help him, and that's got to be worth the ticket, dude. I don't think we play the aggressive route. Not at first, but if it he's seem not, like we're doing him a favor. A favor. Yeah, by not telling Billy, dude. Here's the thing. We should go the route less... Mo whatever is simpler to be able to get the ticket. Well, simpler is it's just reasonable. genocide, dude. I don't think we want to do that. No, it is not the simple thing. Considering you all have been talking about an extremely aggressive path, I'm going to say that as... Uh, I'm going to say that we should try to get it from Franz. If it doesn't work and you really want to go that more violent route... He's not inside the city. We'd have a better chance in a fight. That well, is. when would we try the blackmailing of Voight, dude? Because that like comes apparently after your soft-handed approach, but before the ultra-violent approach, dude. It comes after if he doesn't agree to give it to us in the soft-handed approach. All right, dude. I trust your judgment. Let's uh, let's go do that Chimera genocide, bros. First, we need All to figure right. out where its stomping grounds are. So, if we go to the woods, I do have the ability to locate a creature. I have seen a chimera before. Okay. Well, uh, I, you know, I, I guess you guys were all talking about this on your way to the, uh, you know, the forest. And as you're walking along, the wood is getting uh, deeper, certainly you're getting deeper within the forest um, the air is getting thicker and all of a sudden you notice that the path just kind of uh, stops and the wood is quite thick hmm. I need more mysterious music uh, the wood itself is quite thick the forest is thick and it's a little bit misty and uh where we come in at kind of hard to breathe i would say that you guys are right up here towards the towards the top does the aura of the woods does it seem like it's just an ancient ancient forest or does it seem like there is a magical aura to it uh it's certainly an old wood it's not a. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you know, I get my rhino big again? Oh yes, of course. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it big this time. 
Jay's yeah, gonna... it's certainly an old wood. There's a there's a mist about. You probably feel a little bit of uh, you know, it it certainly isn't the city. You know, it's a it's a wild area. Does the wood seem like it's um, like hazardous or treacherous terrain? Uh, no, it's not difficult terrain. Um, Venric is going to make a. Can I investigate this fog? Like, is it something that is harmful to us, or is it just strange? Basically, it's just strange. It's okay. uh. It's it's a natural, uh, a foginess. supernatural strangeness. Yeah, it's natural. I would say. It's, okay. Uh, for Do the you most mind? part. Would you all mind waiting a few minutes? Please. Do your thing. You all right. Have to take it from there. Hey, Horace, As we better break I'm into gonna... some of this wine while we wait. Oh yeah, uh, I'll definitely open a bottle of wine while we wait. I will do. I'll do two things. The first one, I will be ritualistically casting Detect Magic around the fog specifically in order okay. to get more of an idea about it, if it is magical. Okay. Uh, what? Let's see. Uh, about how long does that take you? That will take me 10 minutes to be able to ritualistically cast that. Okay. Okay. Is what Longstrider you... Longstrider's not a ritual, is it? it no, no you, I just cast it. It no. funnily enough, it is a ritual. It, in it is in Baldur's Gate 3, 3, and you can cast it on your entire party. And yeah. it lasts so long. <laughs> it's busted as shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so uh what are you guys what are you guys doing? What are you guys looking for? Let's start with the folks detecting sure. stuff with spells. I uh your um this isn't magical it's a it's a natural part of the wood okay um my second thing i will do is i will start focusing on locate creature okay and doing so i'm i'm speaking in sylvan and my hair is glowing as i'm doing so Mm. As it as it comes out in little in little hums is my somatic is my verbal components. Ooh, a thousand feet. It's okay because I can concentrate up on it for an hour. I imagine it's like well when it's within a thousand feet of you. Okay. I would say that with your uh, with this spell, uh, just immediately right off the bat, you know that there's no chimera within a thousand feet of you. But you know that that spell does give you, a, let's say, a, you know, sort of a sixth sense about it. Um, one isn't extremely far from here, but it, it's certainly much farther than a thousand feet. Um, maybe maybe you sense its uh, essence on the wind or something like that. Okay. Actually, there's not much wind here. Uh, Because it's a pretty still, thick aired forest, but you you know what I mean. Yeah. So I I will. So it's not around here, but I do sense that there is one outside of the reach of the spell's detection. If we perhaps get closer, I will be able to tell you if it's within range. As I'm going to continue, like, concentrating on it while everybody else is doing stuff. Let's see. Yes, boss. Up. And Tootsie is gonna fly straight up. And go above the canopy of the trees. Uh, does she exit the mist? Yeah, she does. And she is going to look for the tallest tree around. Not the tallest tree in the forest, but you know, the tallest tree in a, a good, good wide area. All right, well, it's actually pretty obvious. There is a singular massive tree 
um, pretty far, probably I'd say uh, a couple miles to the south. Uh, and it is significantly bigger than all of the rest. She'll fly back down. Be like, hey, boss. Tell him the news and relay that. My friends. Yeah. It, is it the center of the forest? The, yeah, like, it's 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 much deeper. Yeah. Deep in this forest, there is a tree, a king tree, ancient. We need it to go deeper. Anything that resides here. That being said, it could have company with it. We could investigate it. If it's Dwarfidil, I want you to do a uh, a perception check. Okay. The Dwarfidil's not feeling so good. He's been drinking a lot of wine. Is that a lot of wine? He ate some mushrooms earlier. But he's still... <laughs> so I guess twenty one on his perception check. You your your double vision coalesces just for the perfect moment, and you see a plant down here. And it's oh. actually some Arlen. Oh, it's a it's a bright red berries. It actually wasn't that hard to see, and you get down there and uh, you know. Eat you want to pick it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You uh, you pick the berry and you you eat it and it actually gives you uh, two hit points per level. <laughs> oh. So uh, uh, you know, if you were if you were damaged, you feel like, oh man, this might this might help you out yeah. a lot. And so I, I you know I'll say you got a you have a, you you eat them and then sort of realize. Oh, maybe I should save this. So, you've got a you've got an Arlen berry in your pocket. You're gonna save that. Okay. Save that for later. While you're down there, with your twenty one, you see a boot print. Okay. And actually, you see more than one boot print. There's actually uh, the, quite a few. And uh, do another do another perception check. Or maybe an investigation, I should say. Yeah, I'll do an investigation. Oh, blueprints. 16? Survival for, for tracking, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, so you see uh, a boot print. You see quite a few boot prints now that you're taking a look down in this little muddy area. Uh, you see a much smaller, delicate footprint as well. Uh, and various other animal tracks uh, around here. Hmm. Uh, what kind of boot? Did I tell that? Yeah, they're heavy and thick, actually. Okay. They're, uh, it, it, it wouldn't have taken much to notice them. Okay, so thick, heavy boots. We got some berries. And which way are the tracks going? Ooh, we need a survival. Okay. 23. Wow. Oh, nice. <laughs> you see them walking. Uh, let's see. How do I how do I show this to you guys? Uh, how about I measure with a line? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see them going in a thisward direction. Can you see my line? Yeah, I can yeah. see one. Okay. Here, I'll, uh, I'll draw it. Dorfiddle spidey zone. Yeah, that's basically what you see. Hey, guys, I think we got to go this way. I don't, I don't think it's elves, but yeah. certainly you think not. It could be uh, Billy's men.
probably. Um, do the tracks lead towards where the large tree is? Uh, well, roughly. I mean, it's not going towards the tree. Yeah. I would say, you know, it's it's in it's in that cardinal direction, but you know. Tree's pretty far from here, you know, at least a couple miles. Alright. Do we follow the tracks to the certain doom of his men? I don't think we have much other choice. Do I get a cardinal direction of where this creature is, or do I just sense that it's outside of the bounds? Right now you sense that it's outside of the bounds. Well, we need to pick a direction, or otherwise I won't be able to sense anything, so... Go ahead this way, then. We follow the tracks. I'll take All right. the lead. Uh, with Dwarfadil, I imagine, because Dwarfadil is the one tracking. Sure. Or I guess Dragul, it's whichever one. I'll continue concentrating oh. and have my, my hair glowing. Dwarf Bell can track it. Vendrick, I want you to make a perception check right now. Ooh, all right. 21. You hear a twig snap right here. And then you, here. yep. And right when you do that, the when you hear that, the hair on your, the back of your neck stands right up. Would you say I'm, hold on, alert? You're extremely alert, on the lookout for danger. You're yeah. not surprised by this at all. In fact, you just see it looks like a woman and seven little gnomes hiding around the tree, <laughs> looking around at you. Oh! Are those Fey? They, they're certainly something. Hello? Uh, oh! And she... They all poke their poke their head back around this tree trunk. We don't mean you any harm if you don't mean us any. They peek back around. Uh, I come tromping up on the rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are these fey? <laughs> <laughs> they are these fey? Let's see. Oops. Anyway, we could uh, delete that line. Let's see. It's me and my seven husbands. It's me and my seven husbands. They poke <laughs> back around here and they go, uh, you're not here to hurt us. Not unless you mean harm to us. Well, of course we don't mean you any harm. Besides, we're just little uh, little what's people what's what what's uh going on here <laughs> well, i was wondering what you're doing in here well, this I is where we live to... well this isn't your property you're squatting oh well i've lived here all my life i think i have a right to to live here that's incorrect oh <laughs> <laughs> uh. And she looks over at uh, Aya. It sort of like pleads with, like with her eyes a little bit, and she's like, "Please, ignore the you shiny. Haven't... Ignore the shiny man on top of the, the, gray horn dog. Ugh. This is well, a dog. thankfully, what? someone around here is on our side. It, it really has been." more violent of late and we we just do our best to stay away from it my my name's grimma i am aya it's nice to meet you what are you uh what are you all doing here specifically i'm looking for a chimera oh oh you're not here to uh hurt anybody or cut down this wood no 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 well we are here to hurt a, a, a chimera 
Huh. We need to chop its head off, one of them. Ooh. We heard it's been causing trouble of late. Well, not for us, but maybe for others. I, I, I definitely don't... Well, it has been causing trouble. Maybe the best thing for it is to be, you know, cold. Put down. And these guys are all talking to each other. Are, you know, their little high-pitched gnome voices. Are they speaking you, Sylvan? Friends. <laughs> yeah, what's going on with these guys back here? Oh, these are my compatriots. We've been together for some time. Like together? Well, together. Yeah, we're together. And you don't really know what she means by that. <laughs> oh, no. It's a little ambiguous. I see. Well, each their own. They're kind uh, of short. Well, they're, you know, they're they're little people. Since we have you here, um, yes, were there some yeah, men could. that came? Well, oh, I thought you were going to nope. do the other thing. No, you go ahead. I'm... No, no, no. Since, since, since we're here, man, we just have a moment. Uh, let me hand out some things, and uh, Dorfidil's going to hand them all a piece of paper. Oh, eviction notices? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, that's how that goes. Uh, Dorfidil is going to hand them uh, pamphlets explaining undead rights. <laughs> oh. And how the undead are the most oppressed people in the whole wide world. Uh, and no one but, else is more oppressed than them. Yes. <laughs> oh, I definitely not had no bad. idea they had it so bad. Yeah, man. Uh, so, you know, just, just wanted to spread some undead awareness, you know. So yeah. if you see any undead in the woods, you know, don't don't yeah. kill them. They usually get harassed by Fay. If you know what oh. Fay. Oh, well, uh, I I I wouldn't know anything about us about the Fay harassing anyone. Uh, Dwarfidel, as you get appro as you approach and hand the uh, the the ticket, or, sorry, the, the the pamphlets out. You notice that these dwarf, not dwarfs, these uh, little guys have big metal boots on. Mm, so I would assume that they left the footprints. Yeah, it's probably them. Mm. Male guys, they fan the footprints. He goes, mm -hmm. well, would you guys like my help? I can point you in the direction of the chimera if you'd like and the, these look. footprints were the ones of the people who had killed the guards no we didn't know they're just big footprints they're just big footprints okay yeah so that's not damning evidence in and of itself no okay yeah we well, definitely like help getting finding the chimera I think, Just right, guys? Point us in the direction. Yeah, yeah. some uh, down to the south. There's a a, a large tree. Um, I think that's generally where it likes to stay. You know, I, maybe it seems a little obvious, uh, the big landmark, but uh, hard to see in the fog. Yeah, that's true, and it it is getting late as well. Um, we could, I, I know of a campsite around here. Would you want me to show it to you? I think it would be lovely to get some perspective from the forest lovers. Perfect. Oh. Well, okay then. And she says something quickly to her, uh, compatriots. Is it and, in Sylvan? Uh, uh, I would say it is in Sylvan. What does she say? She says, basically, let's all move. Let's move out. 
Nothing ominous. Nothing om ominous, of course. Yeah, she says, let's move out. Uh, we're going to, seems like we're going to get some shut eye soon. And uh, yeah, and so we, we tend to just walk on south. Uh, you guys, she goes in a line. All the, all I'll the follow. little all the little guys, uh, little you know, fellas, all the little people, follow her in a, <laughs> you know, in a line down through the, through the forest. Are they singing hi ho? No, they're actually silent. They're oh. silent, but they could they're be singing, singing hi ho. Ho hi. Ho hi. Ho hi. Ho hi. Ho hi. Ho hi. It's off to the forest. We have you seen these guy. fucking guys? <laughs> 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 along the along the way, do I actually sense a chimera? Uh, not within a thousand feet, but it certainly okay. is. Um, it certainly is. You know, there's one. There's been one, one's been around here. Okay. So, if I if I may DM, yes. I, I didn't want to interrupt the conversation and everything, but Dragul and Tootsie as the Fey folk. And, and this mysterious lady popped up. He tried mm -hmm. to duck out of sight and move around behind that ridge line and use this ability hide in plain sight to basically completely camouflage himself into the ridge line. Okay. So. And. Uh... He's going to follow from well back. So he's way in the back, huh? Yeah, he's he's following, but he's gonna he's following from stealth. Okay. Alright, well sounds good. Uh so as you guys are walking, there's a little bit of a forest clearing. And you guys kind of see an abandoned uh, campsite, it looks. It actually looks totally and completely ransacked. Um, the, can I make a quick investigation check on it to, like, sure. see if it's freshly ransacked? Like, has this happened in the last, like, week or two? Or is this, like, very, very, very old? Yeah, uh, it, yeah, go ahead. Yes, you're good at investigating. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's relatively fresh. It's not. It didn't happen today, um, but it's not years old. Uh, probably yeah. uh, doing well. I guess with your investigation, you can see that there's um, tools on the ground. There's saws, uh, maybe some axes, some carts. Vendrix, I think, putting two and two together on that. Mm hmm. Ugh. And she goes, I think we can stay here. Uh, I don't know what happened, but. Can I insight check that she doesn't know what happened here? Yeah, go ahead. I feel like she did it. But I don't <laughs> know anything. Yeah, you don't know. She goes, We can, uh. She goes, The. Chimera is at the tree, uh, but we won't be able to get there before uh, nightfall. I recommend we take it out in the morning. Hmm. Sounds like a plan. Venric right. is uh, is going to be walking up to camp casually, uh, but he wants to look around specifically at like the ground like around these tents and stuff. Okay. Are there heavy footprints? That's what he's looking for. Mm. Okay. Do a uh, nature. 17. Oh, yeah. There's heavy footprints. Okay. Like the metal footprints of these guys is basically what he was looking for. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's casual. Like, he's, he's not letting on the thing he's find or the things he's finding is basically what he's doing. He's okay. just walking into camp, you know, kind of blase. Okay. Uh, you've been goes, here uh, in the woods a long time then. Oh, yes. 
Um, yes, for, for many years, actually. My sisters live farther to the, the west, but we've lived here as us three, and, uh, well, our friends, our friends here. We, you know, we, we came in here and salvaged what we could, but again, I think the Chimera got whoever was staying here. Best I can figure. Seems rather ransacked. Yeah. Well, Chimera did a, a large number on it. And, yeah, it uh, is in, totally destroyed. Yeah. You know, as as he's like saying that and like touching one of the tents and, and sort of pushing it over, like, yeah, the Chimera did a lot. I, can I make a nature check and see if like these were claw marks and things yeah, that go did ahead. this? Or if these go are ahead. weapon marks. You oh. see. They are Vedric, he's so good at the investigating stuff. You see weapon marks. You see there was clearly a struggle. And yes, you do see heavy boot prints, but you also see huge claw marks as well. Uh, huge claw marks. Uh, so you also see sign of the actual chimera. Okay, or so what the chimera you, what you, was here in some capacity. There is. And not only with a 28, I mean, you almost crit that. Not only do you see uh, huge bestial paw prints around and sign of a struggle and boot prints, you also see dog prints as well. Uh, can any of you start a fire? I can, oh. yeah. Just so can... By all means. Well? Suppose we should uh, set up camp then. Probably. Yes, I think that's I think a we good should idea. Take, I think we should take watches, though. I don't think we should all sleep at once. I don't trust these little guys. Hey, we mean, we're more scared of you. That's what my mom told me about poisonous snakes. Hmm. Well, then it's for your benefit that we. Yeah, around. we're take we're just keeping you safe from us. Uh, I'll walk past this kerfuffle to like where there is signs of a campfire and then just kind of like gather stuff together and then I'm going to use Druidcraft to be able to make a small campfire. Okay. Well, uh, she goes, well, I don't, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to sleep. Who's with me? And uh, these three guys go, we're with you. And uh, everyone goes into the tent. Or at least at least these three. The enter. ransackled bits of the tent. The ransackled bits of a tent. It's true. And uh, she goes. She goes. Uh, Sleepy and sneezy. Will you keep watch? And they go. I I'm I I'm Grimma. And, uh, you know, they set up right here and they're, they're watching. So what do you all do? Uh, Dorfidel is just going to go to sleep under a tree like he's been doing for the past, uh, several years. <laughs> okay. All right. So Dorfidel's sleeping. What about Dragul and Tootsie? Uh, Dragul will cast hold on what? why don't I have it in there? so he'll cast dark vision on himself can you do that? can you ups cast that on another creature? Uh, no. Dark Vision. Oh, you just have to do it twice? 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, fucking Tootsie already has dark vision because everybody has dark vision except for humans. humans. And uh, apparently. So he'll have cast dark vision on himself and he is up in this tree and he's camouflaged both of them up Difficult in the tree to see top. You. Yeah, that's a... It's a plus 10 to a stealth roll. I don't know if you'd like me to roll. I say you already you already rolled it. I, I you know you were already uh mm. you're done. But you're you're he, certainly well hidden. He will actually uh not rest. He will Ooh. he he will uh w along with Tootsie wait the night out watching over the the camp from uh his camouflaged perk in the trees with night vision. Okay. Are you going to stay up all night long? He and Tootsie are both going to stay up all night long. Okay. Uh, so I guess that just leaves Aya and the two paladins. I know what I want to do. Uh, what do you want to yeah. do? I want to, um, when, when the, when the moon, it, uh, is it is the is the night sky like clear? Uh, the canopy's pretty thick. Okay. It's still pretty misty, I would say. Okay, but it is actively night, correct? It is actively night, correct? Okay. I would like to ritualistically cast divination. Okay. Your Spe magic and an offering. You ask a single question concerning the specific and the DM offers a truthful reply. And it might be cryptic. Okay, go ahead. I am specifically wondering, um, let, me, let me gather my eggs. Do the Fey of this wood truly mean us harm in any way? Question concerning this event. Let's see. You feel the wind blow a little bit, and the the tree canopy spreads just enough to put some moonlight on you, and you feel in your heart that they do. Genocide justified. <laughs> All right, as uh, okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. And like at the end of the ritual, um, I what I have sacrificed is is a is a piece that I have is an embroidery piece that I've I've put time and money into, and it's of a previous trip to the dreamscape of a uh, Talonbrine and or like the the mountain that Talonbrine is in, and then it uh, is eviscerated into fire and then goes away. Oof. All right. One thing I want to do real quick as Vendrick uh, before I go resting up is while Dwarf and Dill's taking a nap under a tree, I'm actually going to ritually cast a, a rune on the tree. Oh, no. Uh, and it's alarm. Oh. So the area around the tree, basically round dwarf dill, won't be triggered if we all touch it or come within it. But if they come within it, it will set off a, a loud alarm. Okay. Uh, which will hopefully wake up dwarf dill if someone is trying to stab him <laughs> in his sleep. But Fenric's kind of just playing off. He's just kind of walking around camp. Uh, getting ready for for his rest. Is right. there is there a stone that's that's roughly like humanoid shaped or bigger, like a no. big rock? Well, I mean, I guess there'd be could be one right over here. It's not humanoid shaped. No, I just need a big rock. A 
big rock. Okay, well, here's a big rock right here. Okay. I uh, will go over to the big rock and I will, again, ritualistically cast Meld into Stone, as that is where I'm going to be sleeping. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, well, Horace, where are you sleeping? Horace and, uh, uh, well, and uh, Paladin. If, if nobody's taking a watch, I will try to stay up for a These while. These guys offered to take a watch, just so you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ben, ben Rick's, ben Rick's going to take a watch. Or, okay, you're gonna take a watch. So here's here's the thing about Vendrick. He doesn't lay down to go to sleep. He gets kind of on his knees and he gets in this sort of almost meditative state. Um, no, he's like an elf boy. Well, the fae. He, he's he's got some weirdness with him. Yes. But um, I will. At, I, go ahead. I was gonna say he's just he's sort of sitting um in a, a meditative sort of state. Is he taking he's gonna take a watch though? He will take a watch. He'll Yeah, we can uh, all three take watch a watch. The whole time. Horace will three. Horace doesn't Yeah, okay. I'll take a watch. Horace will take a watch, but when he's not watching, he will curl up with his horn dog. With his horn dog. Oh when, when Jake's not watching, he's just going to be sleeping very close to the fire, I guess. If, if there's a fire going in that fire pit. Okay. Well, as you guys curl up and those of you drift off to sleep who drift off to sleep, it's, uh, the night gets very, very, very dark. You hear a little bit of rustling. Who's who's taking first watch? I, I, I well, are all of you staying up all night, or at, at what point does Horace and uh, Samurai Jake go to sleep, if at all? Uh, I'll take first watch. That way, I can just sleep afterwards on a solid chunk. Okay. I would say first watch goes by, no problem. Um, Horace. Roll 2d6. 2d6? Mm-hmm. I assume you're taking second watch, yeah? Yeah. Okay. You see this little guy? Oop. You see this little guy right here? Just sort of like roll over. Mm -hmm. Kind of weirded up. <clears throat> he stands up. He's like, he notices that you're looking at him and he goes, gotta pee. He comes over to this tree. Actually, not the tree that sets off the alarm, but uh, <laughs> this tree right up over here. And then suddenly, I guess Vendrick would hear a noise. Yeah. It's a little whistle. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, Dun, dun, dun. People start rushing out. These little gnomes are out in the moonlight. Hell yeah, they let's get them. They don't look like cute little gnomes anymore. Yeah, yeah, they look like... Dun, dun, dun. Let me... Uh... Oops, let's see. Token layer. These guys look like red caps. Motherfucking red cat, motherfuckers. But I'm Vendrick. awake, right? I saw that You're guy. Awake. You're awake. You're no awake. And then I uh, am gonna give Aya such shit for this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oops, I put that on the map. Right? <laughs> Token. Man. There we go. I didn't expect my premonition to be this true this quickly. This came. It came true. It did. Uh huh. And, uh, yeah, and, and uh, Grimma doesn't look like a beautiful forest woman. She looks like a horrifically ugly, nasty creature. I need you all to roll initiative. Uh, I was going to say. Oh, wait. I, I'm going to no, say no. that Go anybody ahead. who is awake is not surprised. 
Ben but anybody who is surprised, you can never be surprised. No, oh, you know what's man, happening. Still oh, shit, though. Damn. Let's see. Let's see. I gotta roll. In it. In it. Wait, I gotta click the the thing. How do I do that again? In the evil phase, in it. There we go. Yeah. There it is. Turn in order. It. In it. In it. Why do I see so much stuff in here? I'm gonna. Sorry, guys. I'm well, you probably to, have to delete it from like old stuff. Yeah, that always happens. Yeah. Remove that. That's what you yeah, after. After initiative, you always have to clear it, or else it like gets bogged up with all the stuff. My B. All right. Okay. That's, uh, would you say I hear oh, anything yeah, yeah. at an 11? Yeah, I got a three though the first time. I don't know if you do. <laughs> Very kind. kind of would you say yeah. what, Rachel? Oh, I rolled would the you same say thing I again. Did you hear Sorry. anything at an 11? Did you hear anything? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. You'll be woken up. I mean, you're inside of a rock right now, so. Yes, but I have disadvantage while hearing stuff, and I can't see outside of the rock. You can't see what's going on out there. But, no, uh, but I can I can hear it, but at disadvantage. So if I hear it at an eleven, then yes, I'm aware. Yeah, hey, that red cap rolled a nine. Why is he twenty one? Uh, let me let me make sure. He rolled a fifteen first. Wait, is that correct? That Why is he a nine? Because he's fast oh, as fuck. Baby. I accidentally made the uh, the green hag rolled a twenty one. Okay, I gotta change that red cap to a fifteen. There we go. Sorry, I gotta stay. Can't cheat here, you know. Oh, the fact that she's a hag. God damn it. Why? What's wrong? I'm a Hexblood. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, according to Hexblood, like, The bear... tiefling equivalent of, of hags. You should know yeah. about this then, huh? All right. And then I'm going to mark. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to roll something else out here. Okay. Going to numerically descending. And the hag goes first. Uh, let's see. Green hag comes over here. And uh, she is going to cast. Uh, well, dang. Let's see. She's going to cast a uh, lightning bolt on let's see Vendrix right across from here yeah oh. let's see so it's gonna 100 feet long and five feet wide <laughs> blasts out from her direction so uh she's just gonna you know it's just gonna be a line that that sort of uh you know goes off to the west or Seven sorry feet? to the east is she, Dex stage. Who's she, who's she shooting that at? Oh, I'm doing it at, at Vendrick. I guess she's going she's gonna to stand right here and then blast at you. So Ooh. 17. Uh, I don't actually... What is her... What is her, uh, her spell save? Oh, it's, yeah. It's your spell. She gets a 15. So, okay, uh, so I beat it. So you beat um, but it. But Vendrick, he like... I'll say that he doesn't look like he's awake. She charges that bolt to shoot at him. He just whips up to his feet and casts a rune um, because I'm going to use absorb elements to half, okay. half damage. Okay. So 15. So I guess you only take seven. I take seven as you and his uh, long sword starts sparking with electricity. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, um, she, she steps back here and, uh, yeah, she does a she does a little she does a little whistle, and then uh, in, in a cackle, and then now it's your turn, Vendrick. All right, let's see what is Vendrick gonna do. I think I'm a bit worried. We got a bunch of red caps. If I run in there, I'm probably gonna be in trouble. And just so you guys know, I am running a a a, a, a one minute timer. Okay. Oh man. If you if you don't complete your turn before a minute's up, you die in the game. I'm, I'm not gonna say that, but you, you die in real life. And if you die in the game, 
Well, let the guy game, let the guy take his turn. Let the guy take his turn then. He's fucking dying. He's gonna run up to where the hag is. Okay. I think he's gonna go. He's gonna full go full till. He's gonna run up. He's gonna. You see his long sword spark with green flame mm -hmm. uh, as he swings at. Actually, no. He's not gonna use the green flame thing yet. I don't think because he's worried because these red caps turn his next. So he's gonna swing at this guy just normally with a long sword, uh, two handedly. Oh, actually, never mind. I'm gonna blade song. So he kind of like lifts his sword up, does a pose. He is gonna use blade song. Okay. Uh, so there's like this soft hum that comes off of his uh, his sword. He moves very quickly um, and kind of suddenly. Uh, he's gonna swing a sword attack at this guy. Twenty-two. Uh, the guy right in front. Okay, that's a hit. A hit. Gonna deal 13 plus uh, a D6 of electricity, so five from the absorb element. Okay. So that is that. Um, his magic or his weapon is magical. Um, and then the second thing he is gonna do is I'm gonna use my. Sorry, I have a lot of things I have to flip around. Uh, so I use the bonus action, use my attack, and then I am using my extra attack from Blade Singer, and I am actually going to cast a cantrip as the second thing, uh, and I'm going to cast Blade Ward on myself. Ooh. Um, so now yeah, I have resistance it. against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from weapon attacks. So that he basically makes this bubble around him. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so he swipes at this dude, casts that bubble, and that is it uh, for Vendrick's turn. Okay. Uh, let's see. I need to put that on that. Oops. Sorry, guys. I have messed up uh, the grid. I have messed up the grid. I think he just okay, turned it off. Okay, now, now it's, uh, it's a red cap's turn. These two red caps, one of them is going to do his solid kick. He's going to kick a creature, and uh, you make a, a DC 15 strength save or fall prone. Okay. Is that to me? That's to you, Vendor. All right. Ooh. I don't make oh. it. You do fall prone. Ooh, um, not prone. <laughs> He uses that's his uh, his bonus action, and then each one is going to try to attack you with his sickle. All right. Oh, that is that advantage, but you are resistant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eighteen does not hit Vendrick. Okay. And then the other guy one, and then two. I guess a, a twenty. Twenty two does hit. Okay. So he's. Gonna... Oh wait, hold on. Actually, yeah. You know what? I'll take it. So never mind. You're good. Okay. So you take, uh, looks half like 16 this. damage. Yeah, half of 16. Uh, so that is, uh... These other guys run up to, one runs up to Jacob, and then, uh, let's see, the, the three other guys are gonna be around Horace. So Horace, uh -oh. you are on the ground. I assume. Are I you, am currently. I am currently. No, on you, the ground. you're taking a watch. You're taking a watch. Oh, I was taking a watch. So I'll say I, I. But my rhino is on the ground, so I'm. I'm on the rhino, but I. You know, they can still get to me. I'm you're sure. mounted on the rhino for your watch. Well, I was sitting I'm, up. I was leaning on the rhino. One of the high ground. But okay. the rhino is on the ground. Fair enough. So I'm within you're, range of the. Red you're on your. Percent. You're on. Yeah. Okay. These guys are gonna multi-attack you. One. Oh my gosh. Put the wrong thing. One, two, three. Four, five, and six. Ooh. They don't have advantage, but uh, 16, okay. 18, 18, 8, 13, and 21. I think now only one it, hits you, right? Would it be fair to say that I did put my armor on for my watch? Yeah, I would yeah. say it's fair. It's okay. Fair. Then, yeah, my armor class is 19. Okay, so only one's going to hit you. All right. I'll take, <laughs> one I'll take it. Four damage. This guy <laughs> down here, he runs over here. To, uh, actually, yeah, he probably runs over here and he's like, hey, 
looking up at looking up at uh, Mr. Dwarfadil, and he throws his sling at you twice. Seventeen and twenty-one, Data. Uh, I just assume those are gonna hit. Okay. Just because I'm asleep still. So oh, okay. Well, I'll take the. Your, well, the alarm would go off because they just stepped in your in your alarm. Yeah. And uh, so I guess that's that's six damage for you. And then uh, one here is going to slash at Jacob Kane with his sickle. Does a uh, 17 or 18 hit you, Jacob? Uh, uh, well, remember, I am asleep slash prone, so those would be an advantage, and they're both hit. Okay. 25. All right. Okay. Jacob Kane, you are rudely awakened, and you are now in, uh, ready to get into the fight. But we're going to call that the surprise round. Uh, am I able to stand up for the surprise round, or do I have to remain yes. prone? Yes, okay. you can stand up. Yeah, then I'll stand up. Uh, Dragul, go ahead. Right. Uh, I think Dragul, for now, is going to stay sequestered in his camouflage. But he is going to whisper something into... Tootsie's ear. And Tootsie's gonna bust out of the trees uh, from complete obscurity. Um, we have yeah. lost the grid, by the way, DM. You know that, right? Uh, yes. I don't know what... <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, That's fine. Maybe I go we'll, to map We'll make later. it work. Uh, may I have a 30-foot cone, please? A 30-foot cone? How do I do that? Um... If you go to the measuring tool, you can okay. actually go to shape now. Uh, and you can do cone. like this. I see it. Cone. Very cool. And how do you want it? Uh, actually, that's uh, pretty much perfect right there. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, right there. Uh, so... No, the, yeah, can you leave it there? Oh, sorry. I was the one. Oh, where was I? Yeah, so she... So she's moved 20 oh. feet. Where was I? Damn it. Was it right, yeah. right there? Like if that? you're trying to hit That'll all these three, it. that's fine. You know, go ahead. All right. Yeah. Uh, Tootsie flies over there uh, out of the obscurity, busts out of the tree line going, Banzai! And she's going to drink breath. Okay. Roll your 10d6. Oh, wait. It, that's probably not 10d6. It's 8d6, yeah? It's 8d6, yeah. Okay. These guys... Let's see. Oop. Oop. Never mind. They, they don't have advantage on that. Okay, so they're going to make dex saves. Yeah? Let's see. One, two, three. Uh, and what's the DC? What's your spell save DC? Uh, the spell save DC... What is that? What is, hold on. What is each uh, Yeah, okay. Um, the spell save DC is 14. Okay. Ah, damn it. So one takes full damage, and the others take, I believe, half damage, correct? Okay. Uh, yes. Yep. So that, that back one, we're going to say, takes full damage. And we will put him there. And then these guys are going to take each. All right. Cool. Aya, you are now awake 30, and alert. 35, 40 as uh, Tootsie takes the rest of her movement. Perfect. Aya, you are awake and you are ready to fight, but you are not actually uh, not in the fight just yet. No. Um, no. This, uh, Waking up causes a, uh, a surprise round to anybody. Okay. Uh, the dogs, however, are going to run up here. And they are going to get all up on... Let's see. They're going to move here. Uh, only one of them is going to attack Jacob with his double bite attack. But one hits. One hits you. It's only five damage, no problem. But run a cons check. 
to see if you get poisoned. Okay, don't tell me the answer at first. I guess it's already, is it written on there? It's already oh. there. All right, well, <laughs> I don't know how that works for luck. That doesn't oh, matter. You are safe. Horace, go ahead. What do you do? All right, I'm going to keep my turn pretty simple here. I'm going to, uh, first of all, my rhinoceros is going to attempt to gore this guy right here. Gore it. Gore him. Yeah. All right, that for, certainly hits. For 15 bludgeoning damage. All right. I don't know why a, a gore would be bludgeoning damage, but that's what it said. Sure. <laughs> It's a blunt uh, horn. He's pretty. He's it's pretty fucked horn. up. He looks pretty fucked up. Yeah. All right. Horace is gonna go ahead and try to whack him with his warhammer then. All right. Uh. Oh, actually, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my bonus action, and I'm gonna cast Hunter's Mark on on that guy first, because okay. uh, apparently I'm Fey touched. That's why I, that's why I, it's always the it's always the Fey touch that hate Fey so much, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> well, they been touch you. Yeah, I forgot I took God. that uh, I forgot I took that. Um so I'm going to so then I'm going to hit him with my warhammer. Okay. Yeah, you you hit him. Do All that right. damage. With uh D6 for Hunter's mark as well. Yeah. Oh, I thought I clicked the. the well, it doesn't matter him. because this guy is. <laughs> he's he's fucking dead. He's done, so He's done. All right, good. Uh, then Are I'm gonna else? use I'm gonna use my extra attack to hit the next guy over. Okay. Ooh. For a thirteen. Ooh. He parries it with his uh, spiky mustache. Oh. It does not it does not hit him, unfortunately. That damn mustache damn mustache all right the hag over here he uh oh hang on oh go Let's ahead get dark, Adele. i i did on purpose okay because you were uh sleeping but you're you're awake and ready to go now but so your turn will be right after Fendrick. uh but the hag over here she's pretty scary he casts a huge spell eye bite Ooh. And uh, let's see. For this turn, she is going to look at Horus and try to make him fall asleep. Ooh, and it's a wisdom save? Uh, I am I think it oh. was a wisdom save. Yeah, it's a wisdom save against her. I believe it's a DC. DC, which is a... DC 13? I think it's higher than that. Let me check. These are 15, is what 15. you said. 15. 15. All right. Come on. Oh, you can be 15, Horus. I mean, you've got... Oh, oh. that's my aura yeah. of protection. Exactly. Wait, is that... 15. Wait, so it's 15. 15. So, so he, he saves, wins. doesn't he? Yep. Okay, he cool. Does. All right, Fendrick, you're up. All right. She, she's going to... She's going to back up, actually. All right, Fendrick gets up. Uh, as he does, bonus action, I am going to attempt to telekinetically shove uh, one of these guys, uh, particularly this one, up to this one. Okay, you want them to be a... right next to each other, correct? Yeah, he needs to make okay. a strength save. Sure, they're pretty strong. Oof, but that didn't nope. do very well. He gets shoved up. All right, so which one do you want to move? Uh, the bottom one to the top. Done. And then... Uh, Vendrick's blade now glows a fiery green um, as he is going to green flame blade uh, hitting the top one is what he's swinging at. Okay, go ahead. Uh, ow! ow. Unfortunately, um, it does miss. Unfortunately, I do miss. Um, but that's okay because my second attack is just going to be a normal attack. Okay. A 16. That does hit. Yeah. All right, 16 will boom, hit him Oof. for 14, this it top will, one. It, the, the sword will also glow a blue cold. Um, for how much more? For uh, two, two more. damage. All right, 
noted. Dwarfadil, you're up. All right, Dwarfadil wakes up, looks around. Still some form of combination of sleepy and high <laughs> and tripping out a little bit. He goes, Horus! Santa and the elves! <laughs> As he uses crumbling walls <laughs> reality. <laughs> okay. And his two <laughs> words are Santa and elves. Santa and elves. <laughs> Yep. Uh, ooh. I'm. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna say. Santa comes and uh, and uh, Santa comes here and you know the essence of Santa appears and I will tell you what happens after you finish your turn. What the hell is this? For? Uh, and then uh, Dorfadil is just going to use the rest of his turn on movement. <laughs> okay. In the middle of it. You okay. What's going on? All right. The elf. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say, who's the most elf-like person here? I'm going to say that's Aya. I'm not. I'm not for sure what Aya is, but uh, you feel like the essence of Santa has come upon you, Aya, and you get to make one action right now. Oh, I get very quickly, but yes. Okay. I'm What's gonna... the first thing that comes to mind? I'm gonna come out of the stone. You. Okay. Success. Success. That's it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. It's the uh, it's these nasty nasty creatures again. Um. Uh. Let's. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> first guy, Garrett Vendrick's gonna get yeah. kicked with this boot. All right. DC 15. Strength. Oh, You're prone I'm again. Down again. Unfortunate. No. They're they're gonna they're gonna both sickle you again. <laughs> they're just gonna get the crumbs. Both of them are gonna miss. They're are they all gonna miss? <laughs> they're all gonna miss. <laughs> Vendrick's AC is 20 while he's blade songing. Oh boy, okay. So he is boom boom just deflecting it as he's like swirling around on the ground. Alright, alright, alright. Let's see. Uh Hor can they? Can anybody try to knock? Can they do a kick on Horus while he's mounted, or is he immune to being knocked prone? They can um, try and shove him, but it's at disadvantage because the creature is bigger than them. Uh, okay, but they can't get to Horus uh, on their own, no, they, I guess? They can attempt to shove him, but it's at disadvantage because they have to basically Jump. reach over a large creature. He's asking about that jump. particular okay. special I'm gonna, move. Then I'm going to say this. They're going to try to... They're going to... Well, I don't know. All right. They're just going to both sickle it for us. All right. Let's see. With uh, Probably all those missed, too. 17? Those yeah. are all going to miss as I just block them with my shield willy-nilly over here. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, no. I don't have a shield. I block them with my elbow all right <laughs> sounds good this guy runs over here he's focused on dwarfadil and uh he gives dwarfadil the solid kick to make a strength right. save dwarfadil all right oof you are down on the ground and that makes you uh liable to get hit by the sickle twice 24 and a 19 uh both of those are gonna hit Okay. 30 total. Jacob Kane, you're up. All right. Um, oh, did this guy attack me? Uh, I believe he did, but they he missed. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Jacob Kane uh, draws perfection, which is currently at a two. Mm -hmm. And he's going to take a stab at... Uh, at this gnome guy, so add two to this. Fifteen. Fifteen hits. Alright, and then add two to the damage, but I'm also gonna uh, smite him and depth strike him. So... Oh, okay. Let me mark that off real quick. So... 
Death Strike. Uh, take the two off of that Death Strike. Let me pull that off. Right. And where is my Smite? Do Divine Smite. Uh, just that eight. All right. So fourteen you, you plus ten. Twenty-four. Guy. Yeah, you uh, you hurt this guy pretty bad. And then uh, I'll follow that up with an unarmed strike. Go ahead. You hit. And just punch him in the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and if he's still up, then I'll spend a key, another key do to uh, do two more unarmed strikes. Uh, I'll do one at him and one at the dog that bit me. The first one at okay. him. Oh, that, I didn't click that right. Uh, where is that? Miss. That misses, and the yes. one of the dog. Fuck, I keep clicking the wrong thing. And I miss. Oof. That also misses. Unfortunate. All right. Uh, is that turn? That's turn. Dragool, what All do right. you do? Dra Dragool is going to burst out of his shell of camouflage. All right. He is going to run. Jumping out of the trees and bounding down this slope once he sees Dwarfadil go down and just get sickled to shit. Oof. He is gonna bounce over here, uh, releasing the sword of unreliable greatness. He's gonna attack. It's only a two. For Still hits. Uh, he is going to utilize uh, his favorite foe. Whatever, it's just an extra d6. Boom. Uh, okay, I think I had that on already. So favorite foe nine, and he. Uh, it is also going to glow blue with infused strikes. So another five. All right. As he cool. comes through and just kind of stabs the broken short sword into this uh, crappy little short dude's back. This little fucker goes, ah, stab him in the back. Die. All right, is that turn? No, he gets to attack again. Go ahead. Uh, for only an 11 this time. That is a miss. And then Tootsie is going to take a bite right at his neck. 15 hits. Uh, ignore that three, please. But it is uh, another 11. Okay. Got it. Aya. All right. Um, so I got to wait for that. Okay. I will... None of these are trips. Okay. As... I'm out of the stone. I see that Samurai Jake is being attacked by three separate entities, and mm -hmm. they're the closest to me. So, immediately, I'm going to cast Moonbeam at a higher level. Uh, we'll go with... Fuck it, we'll go with five. Why not? And let me show what Moonbeam does. That might be helpful. It kills Samurai oh, Jake. See ya, Babs. See ya. Yeah, have a good We're going to just end this round and then uh, be done. Killer. Yeah. yeah. I'll catch it on the replay. Two, two. As, yep. Tell me I'm what gonna, Moonbeam does. I'm going to cast Moonbeam. Moonbeam is a 10 foot radio. Uh, sorry, it's 5 foot radius, so it's a 10 foot square. And I'm focusing it on um, these two, so this way Samurai Drake's not in it. Um, it's 40 feet high. And they have to make a constitution saving throw, or they're going to take the radiant damage or half as much. Um, and if it is a shape changer of any kind, it has disadvantage on the saving throw. If it fails, it reverts to its original form. Okay. And uh, I can move it every turn. Sure. So you're, you're focusing on the dogs below? Yes, I'm currently focusing on the dogs. I casted it at fifth level. It is doing... Um, it is doing 28 damage. Sounds good. Let's At see. DC 16 constitution save. Constitution save. All right, let's see. One and two. They both fail. 
So how much total damage? 28. All right. And it's radiant if that matters. That does not matter. All right, saving that. Is that turn? That is turn as soon as I kind of move, like, not in the general sight of so many enemies. Sure. That ends me. All right. Well, these dogs are going to get on either side of uh, Jacob Kane. Each one is going to bite or attempt to bite at him twice. Two. 24 might hit. The 24 does hit. All right, so only the 24 does. you got to make a constitution save. Uh, it's not one of those these... past ones to be good for 24 hours. That's true. Uh, I was hoping. Okay, uh, I will yeah, make it again. I don't think uh, so. Con save. Uh, can I spend my luck point? Yeah, sure. Okay. My Wait, one... can you spend your luck point? I yeah. assume you can to re-roll. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can re-roll anything with like, a luck point. It's one of those things where it's like you have to do it before, uh, it, but it's like, well... I think I still failed. I'm pretty sure a one. Or what was it? Was it a 12 <laughs> yeah. or was it a 15 for that? It was a 12, I think. Perfect. It wasn't like a high... Uh, it is a DC 12 con save. Oh, yes, perfect. I guess you pass it. Thank goodness for luck, huh? Yeah. Uh, this one is going to bite at uh, Dwarfadil twice. I guess it has advantage since he's on the ground. Oof. Yep. Those are going to hit. Oh, uh, what was the damage for my dog bite? Uh, oof, what was it? It was not. Oh, it was, uh... Yes, three. Six damage. All right. Six damage. And then Sounds good. Data takes. Already got 13. it. Okay. And uh, roll your con save. Okay. Which I DC twelve. Passed. Oh, you're totally fine. And then the uh, the other two dogs bite at Dragul. I assume twenty fives hit you, right, Dragul? Oh, he's uh, not here. Okay. Well. Horace, how about you go, and uh, we will we'll get in the turn. We'll get back to, to Dragul taking significant damage after this. All right, so the first thing is Rhino is going to try and gore this guy in the middle here now. Okay. For 19. That hits. All right, we're going to dump nine bludgeoning into that guy. All right. Uh... And I'm gonna, he's still up, I'm assuming? He's up. All right. I'm gonna use my bonus action to move my hunter's mark to him. Hmm. I'm going to do so that I can get my hunter's mark going. And then I'm gonna try to whack him with my war hammer. For 19. That hits as well. Ah, oh, there we go. See, now we've got our Hunter's Mark and a crew on Swain there. So 23. Bam. Okay. <laughs> He's holding on by a thread. Oh, man. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my bonus action, or my, uh, my extra attack to hit him again. All right. That Boy. is a hit. You don't even have to roll, and this guy goes, Bleh, and just sort of splats onto the ground. Hell yeah. Dead. And I turn right. to this guy. I think, uh, I think with that, that we're calling it for the night. Yeah. All right, man. I, Horace is going to give Aya so much shit. Yeah. Yeah. She's <laughs> kind of racist, everyone. you know? It's like, oh, humans can be evil, but not these evil fae that are totally trying to kill us. Yeah. I, <laughs> Why would we want to kill them? Yeah, I did not say that humans couldn't be evil. I was calling y'all a hypocrite because it... Yeah, you were wrong, and I was right, because Yasni said, and Yasni's always right. Yasni's well, the way, the okay. truth, you're, and the light. You're act okay. Amen. Amen. Proved our How about preconceived this one? You notions. Yeah. <laughs> you actively see, though, she casted something very high level in order to protect the closest one, Samurai Jake. That's true. That's true. Which we she won't. did, in fact, say, I will still have your back. It doesn't matter if I'm a heathen. You know, to be That's fair, true. you did attack dogs and not the fake creatures. <laughs> I figured, you know, the po we were warned about the big poisonous dogs. So I we figured, why not take out the poisonous dogs? Poisonous dogs. <laughs> so true.
Goddamn poisonous dogs. All right, guys. Take care, Brad. That was a good session. I'm going to hop on off of here. Later. Later All right, y'all. See you, man. With that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more poisonous dog bites from the Adventurer's Landing.